happy morning to all of you and a warm welcome to all of you on behalf of uh, Ahmedabad Management Association. You will also welcome all the participants who are live on YouTube. So thank you not to all of you being here today morning. Uh, just a brief, Ahmedabad Management uh, Association is a happening place. We do various activities, training programs, seminars, conferences on relevant themes. So my request to all of you, keep update with AMA website to take the benefits. So all of you are aware today we have a talk on the science of mind management by Swamiji. Very interesting talk, so wait for a little time. Uh, and today the schedule of the program is post my introduction of Swamiji. Uh, there will be an e-launch of the book uh, by Swamiji on the science of mind management. And post uh, there is a uh, you know, talk by Swamiji followed by question answer through chat box. So before we start the program, I have a pleasure to introduce Swamiji. Swamiji is a world renowned teacher of spirituality, yoga and meditation. He is an international authority on mind management, IIT Delhi and IIM Kolkata uh, alumnus and a Bhakti Yoga Sant. Swamiji formulated Jagat Guru Kripaluji Yog, a JK Yog, a non-profit organization, which offers a unique yogic system, JK Yog, also known as yoga for body, mind, and soul. Swamiji, who has studied the Eastern and Western scriptures under the guidance of Sri Kripaluji Maharaj, dives deep into Vedic psychology to leverage the immense power of the mind that results in the ultimate transformation. In this uh, lecture today, uh, Swamiji quotes, uh, in, in this lectures, Swamiji quotes masterfully, not only the, uh, you know, uh, only from Eastern scripture, such as Vedas, Puranas, Upanidas, Upanishads, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana, but also the other scriptures such as Bible, Quran, Tao Te Ching. So from more than quarter century, Swamiji has been traveling around the world, awakening thousands of minds by spreading profound knowledge of Vedas. Swamiji has been invited for lectures at Fortune 500 companies in the US, such as Google, Intel, Verizon, and Yahoo, even at various NGOs and nonprofit uh, you know, organizations such as United Nations, even uh, our DRDO, Indian Railways, and at the top universities such as IIT, IIM, MIT, Northwestern, uh, Princeton, Stanford, and Yale. Swamiji has authored books like Seven Minds for Success, Happiness, and Fulfillment, Bhagavad Gita, The Son of God, Art of Mind Management, and many more. So uh, thank you, Swamiji, for giving us your time today morning and now i request you uh, for a e-launch of the book uh, namaste parish karyaji thank you for your introduction i'd like to express my appreciation to the Ahmedabad management association last year i had the privilege of delivering a lecture in your wonderful hall in Ahmedabad and this year because the visit was not possible because of the pandemic it is so nice to be able to connect with the community of the Ahmedabad Management Association by this online platform. So the new book, which has been published by Westland Publications, which is a wing of Amazon India, is The Science of Mind Management. And we are happy to launch it here in front of you all and very, very happy to have an opportunity to broadcast this knowledge. Should I begin my discourse? Yes, Swamiji. And I think before you take on the this thing, but I, I would like to make a point here. Uh, Swamiji, I got this book uh, yesterday evening and I started reading it, uh, very interesting. And I will tell you, 
this will be useful to all of us uh, on you know mind management and uh, now i request you to enlighten us okay yes thank you <clears throat> this story is related by sundar pichai whom every indian is familiar with the world famous ceo of google he was sitting in a restaurant and on the table in front of him some old ladies and gentlemen were having their dinner when all of a sudden a cockroach flew in from the door and decided to land on the dress of one of those old ladies now all hell was let loose she had never had a cockroach sitting on her dress like that she leapt up she shouted and lifted her hands in the hope that the cockroach would fly away that started off a chain reaction where the others also started standing and shouting etc in the meantime the cockroach decided that it will take off from this lady and it landed on the head of an old gentleman it was now his scream it turned to scream and shout and then the cockroach flew on to the arm of a third lady when this pandemonium was happening the waiter entered wondering what the confusion is about and the cockroach again flew and this time landed on the chest of the waiter however the waiter maintained his calm completely composed he relaxed allowed the cockroach to relax itself and then with his cloth he picked up the cockroach and went and threw it outside the restaurant a scene that drama happening got sundar pichai to start thinking what was the cause of the disturbance of this old people sitting there was it the cockroach if it was then the waiter should have also been disturbed but why is it that the waiter did not get disturbed while these ladies and gentlemen did he came to the conclusion and when his he shared his realizations about it that story went viral on the internet by the name cockroach theory or sundar pichai he said look if the cockroach was the cause of the disturbance then the waiter should have also been disturbed and if the cockroach was not the cause then why did these old people get disturbed and he said the reason was they were not able to handle the situation so we need to remember that when we experience disturbance when we experience anxiety it is so easy to point fingers on the outside however if we can master our attitudes then in the midst of the biggest chaos we can still be at peace this is mind management lord krishna talks about it in the bhagavad gita when he says yogina karma kurvanti sangam tyaktva atma shuddhaye arjun a yogi is not one who can do chakrasan or mayurasan lord krishna gives the definition one who is doing most intricate complicated works and is yet calm and peaceful within this brings us to the topic of mind management now in business schools 
throughout the country. You learn how to manage finances and set right problems that may arise, how to manage manufacturing systems, machines, personnel, market environments, information systems. But ask yourself, have you mastered the art of managing yourself? In situations of chaos, can you still maintain your poise and give the best possible response? Now that one thing seems to be neglected in the agenda of management training. That is why I always say, Manager, manage yourself. You have learned the management of the externals. However, when you get into the managerial field, in practical real life situations, you will realize that what counts the most in effectivity at work and successful performance is not just your knowledge of management theory, but your ability to manage your own mind. Take a look at a very successful entrepreneur of a few decades ago, Mr. Soichiro Honda of the famous Honda Motor Corporation of Japan. He was not born with a silver spoon in his mouth, as they say. He came from an ordinary middle-class family without much resources. When he was studying in engineering school, being a little more driven than the other students, he relooked the piston rings and redesigned the piston rings for Toyota cars. But when he took it to them, they rejected his model. And when he came back, he became the laughing stock of his classmates who said, you were thinking of marketing piston rings to Toyota. But he knew how to manage his attitude. He went back to the laboratory, made a better prototype and took it back. This time it got selected. So Toyota placed an order with him for the manufacture of piston rings and also extended a capital for him to set up his factory. Now, when he was about to set up that factory, at that time, Germany entered into the war, uh, Japan entered into the war. And the consequence, that was the time of the Second World War. So all the cement got diverted to the war machinery. Not to be discouraged, Mr. Honda, along with his friends, invented a new method for making cement. And with the help of that, he set up his piston ring manufacturing plant. However, an earthquake leveled it to the ground. He said, never mind. This is once in a while thing. It's not going to happen again and again. He set up his factory one more time. But this time, the Pearl Harbor attack had happened when Japan had attacked USA and USA had entered the war. So the American bombers came and bombed his factory off. So Mr. Honda, he was still not discouraged. In those days, the planes used to carry gasoline. And then when the petrol was finished, they would throw that down. He called them souvenirs of Mr. Truman and he utilized them to make his plant one more time. In the meantime, the war got over and Japan lost. And alongside with that, it lost control over its colonies. And now petrol was in short supply. 
People didn't have the gas to drive their cars. Honda himself was driving his bicycle. Where was the question of Toyota purchasing his piston rings? So once what he did was he attached a motor to his bicycle to make the first motor bicycle. When his neighbors saw that, they loved it and said, do it for me as well. After he had done it for about 30 people, he realized here was a marketable idea, but he didn't have the money to set up a motorcycle plant. The look at his spirit. He got a list of 8,000 bicycle stockists in Japan, and he hand wrote letters to 5,000 of them. 1800 extended a little, little bit of capital with the help of which he set up his motorcycle factory. The first model that came was a huge contraption and it was a complete failure. He still did not get discouraged. He made a smaller version and called it the Super Cub and this was an immediate success. After that, he never looked back. In his lifetime, the Honda Motor Corporation employed 100,000 people worldwide. So what distinguished him from his classmates in engineering school? Not necessarily better theoretical knowledge, but the ability to go beyond obstacles to remain inspired in the face of failure and defeat. This is the science of mind management. Interestingly, mind is an inner resource. The external resources we can control to some extent, but largely they are not in our hands the vagaries of the weather, the ups and downs of the economy. However, our mind is always something that we can change. Unfortunately, a vast majority of people have not trained their mind to think as their wish. And that is why thoughts happen to them. Emotions happen to them. Now, sometimes these emotions become compulsive and then a person says, I'm stressed out, I'm anxious. On the other hand, those who have learned to conquer their mind, they find right within the biggest treasure house of positivity, optimism, hope, enthusiasm. That is why in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna said, Uddhare Atmanam Atma Namavasadhayet Atmaiva Yatmano Bandhur Atmaiva Ripuratmanaha. Arjun, this mind, if uncontrolled, will be your worst enemy. You don't need any other enemy in the world. But if you can master it, it will be your best friend. That is why don't degrade yourself by your mind. Uplift yourself by the power of your mind. Actually, our Vedas have since thousands of years been giving us this message. Mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo Look, O oh human beings, the cause of bondage will not be the clothes you wear or the tilak or lack of it on your forehead. It will just be the state of your own mind. And if you can correct that state, if you can make your inner holy, then you will become liberated. So how do we handle these inner emotions of ours. 
the vedic knowledge says this mind has got four components to it man buddhi chit and ahankar this man buddhi chit and ahankar are not four different entities the mind the intellect the chit and the ego they are four aspects of the one mind or antahakaran so for example to simplify and understand the mind harbors emotions feelings it has desires hankerings and aversions and beyond the mind is the intellect or the buddhi that analyzes that decides what is beneficial and what is harmful so throughout the day there is a tussle between the mind and the intellect for example when you are sitting for your lunch the mind says you know this chocolate ice cream is so nice can i have three more helpings of it and the intellect says look my dear mind it is tasty i understand but it will increase your cholesterol now if the mind wins you continue eating and if the intellect wins you put a stop to it so this is the tussle that happens throughout the day when you go for exercise the mind says it is so painful can we stop the intellect says it is good for you carry on so the mind wants immediate gratification it works on the basis of the pleasure principle immediate pleasure and freedom from pain but the intellect knows that sometimes pain is beneficial and sometimes pleasure is harmful so the intellect analyzes what is in the best interest and the mind comes in the way that is why the quality of self discipline becomes so important if you wish to achieve anything in life you will have to enhance your self control your will power those who have self discipline they eat the right things they do exercise in the proper amounts when they sit for work they keep their mind focused they are able to control their language so there is less strain in their relationships they are socially responsible all these factors of human endeavor their proficiency is connected to ability for self control interestingly this ability can be grown if we go into the physiology our human brain is special amongst all the creatures because it has a bigger weight proportion to the body it is 150th of the body weight however there is one part in this human brain which is exceptional and not present in the other creatures that is the prefrontal cortex and what does the prefrontal cortex do it enables us to do the more difficult thing to avoid pleasure and to embrace pain because it is beneficial as somebody said that the biggest obstacle in reaching our goal is not the difficulties in the way but an easier path to a lower goal we find an easier path and we say why go by the harder path but the prefrontal cortex enables us to do just that the animals don't have it an animal will not say i will observe ekadashi fast i like green grass but i will abstain from it 
for self purification this faculty is given to us it gives us three powers i want awareness of my long term goals i will the ability to do difficult things and i won't the strength to desist from temptations because they are harmful so this feature of the prefrontal cortex is extremely handy and that is what provides us with self control self discipline so how can we grow this interestingly it can be grown just like you grow your muscles the more you exercise your muscles the stronger they become in the same way the more you exercise your brain the gray matter keeps on getting added to it if you keep on working at mathematical problems the portion of the brain that is comes into play for doing mathematical problems is exerted and it keeps on packing more and more gray matter making you more proficient in mathematics in the same way if you exert your will power the prefrontal cortex starts growing it is something that can be tried for 10 days make it a resolve that i will do the right thing even though it is difficult i will not do the wrong thing even though it is pleasurable every time we exert this option this is pleasurable but i'll avoid it this is painful but i'll accept it we are exercising our will power muscle and growing in self discipline so this is what lord krishna calls in the bhagavad gita buddhi yog what is buddhi yog buddhi yog now we hear of karma yog gyan yog bhakti yog lord krishna says buddhi yog mupashritya machitta satatam bhava arjun what i am telling you is the yoga of the intellect that means with your intellect learn to control the mind slowly slowly it will become subdued as your servant and if you allow the mind loose then you will become a servant of your moods i am feeling like this i am feeling like that people who are unable to control their mind they are slaves of their emotions and feelings and those who have mastered this mind they find a higher purpose in life and progress putting aside these feelings and emotions to do what is right also this ability to master the mind helps us overcome stress so st- stress is nowadays a ubiquitous problem as the world has speeded up with the internet the mobile the whatsapp the social media alongside with that speeding up our mind is now experiencing great stress until it has become an all pervading problem this stress is also sometimes called the executive's disease so what is stress and how will we handle it will give us a peep into the vedic science of mind management let me along with you delve into this deeply for a few minutes to an engineer stress is the force in a beam or a machine part or a structure that tends to shear it twist it turn it bend it or break it but we humans also experience stress in our emotional personality when we handle external situations 
And when we experience that the resources required to handle this situation, I do not have them, either financial or emotional or emotional or relational or spiritual or physical. And that leads to stress. Nowadays, doctors, medical science has correlated 33% of medical ailments with stress, with the state of our mind. So what is the solution to stress? If you go and ask Mr. Google, they will tell you, start listening to soothing music, go out for a walk, do Tai Chi, do yoga, do meditation. But factually, none of these will remove stress. They will only address the symptoms and not go to the cause of the disease. Just like if someone has malaria, there's a problem and the symptom is fever. Now you can give paracetamol to reduce the fever, but the malaria will not go. Similarly, you do yoga, etc. It's all right. You'll calm your mind to a little bit, but the cause of stress will still remain. And this art of stress management was stated 5,000 years ago in the Bhagavad Gita. Where well, Lord Krishna said, Karmanne vadhikaraste ma phale shukadachana says Arjun, do your best, but don't be attached to outcomes. What is stressing us out? Outcomes, not hard work. Students come to me, Swamiji, my examination is in January and I'm totally nervous. I say, why are you nervous? Because you have to work hard. Yes, yes, yes. So not at all. Hard work will never make you nervous. It is the attachment. What will happen? What will happen? That is what is stressing you out. So when you are nervous, can you study better? Of course not. When the mind is agitated, how can I study better? So this philosophy of work was stated. We people are focused on the outcome. And Lord Krishna says, look, focus on the effort. The outcome will take care of itself. Now, what a simple philosophy of work. I call this NATO, not attached to outcome. Of course, there is one North Atlantic Treaty Organization, but that has gotten disbanded in modern times. So not attached to outcome. That means you put in your best efforts and after that, be happy. See, some people here ask the question that Swamiji, if we are not attached to outcomes, we will, our effort will suffer. We will not be able to maintain the competitive edge in today's modern professional environment. But I say absolutely the reverse. If you are not attached to the outcome, like when you go for a job interview, if you are attached to the outcome, you become nervous. And if you already have a job, you say, okay, let me just go and check it out. You have the best interview of your life because you are relaxed. Like for example, there's a surgeon. He is the expert surgeon of Ahmedabad. He's conducted 5,000 surgeries in his life. But his son has had an appendix burst and requires an immediate operation. The doctor says, I will not do it. I'm calling my friend, you do it. But you're the best surgeon in Ahmedabad. That's right, it's my son's matter. I will become nervous. The moment the mind becomes disturbed, the performance suffers. And when the mind is detached, we can focus completely on the effort. So how will we make the mind detached? 
a simple solution is given in the Bhagavad Gita. You attach your mind to the Supreme and it becomes Karma Yoga. So what is Karma Yoga? Yat karo si yad asna si yad juho si tata si yad yad tapasya si kaunte yad tad kurushva madar panam. Arjun, whatever you do, do it for the pleasure of the Lord. Now your attachment is not to the outcome, but the pleasure of the Lord. And when you do it in this way, the mind is in the divine. And your body is in the world. So while doing the most intricate kinds of works, your mind remains in yoga. That is the wonderful message of these scriptures. There were great kings in the past. Durav, Prahlad, Ambarish, Prithu, Vibhishan. They were ruling a kingdom. They were doing Sam, Nam, Dand, Bhed. And despite all of this, within, they were in yoga. So people say, is this spirituality relevant to our everyday life? Absolutely, it is relevant through this wonderful art of karma yoga, where you are doing your karma and still keeping the mind in yoga. But this karma yoga, will lead to one very important benefit. It will purify the intention behind your works. See, people talk about lack of corporate ethics. And why do they do that? Because in multinational corporations, employees have become like commodities, whom you pick up, you extract maximum productivity or marketing sales out of them. And if their performance reduces, you throw them out. So the goal then is the bottom line of the company. And that creates an, a crisis in the employees. Why am I working hard? What purpose is this serving? So when they don't find purpose in their work, the motivation suffers. And when we can replace that with the karma yoga model, where we say the motivation in my work is I wish to please God with it. Naturally, we will do our work to the best of our ability. And we will feel the inspiration as well. There is the story of Tan Sen. Tan Sen, every Indian has heard his name. He was such a wonderful singer. Through Rag Megh Malar, he would cause the rain to fall. And through Rag Deepak, he would light up the lamps. He was one of the jewels in the court of Akbar in Delhi. So Akbar once asked him with great curiosity, Tan said, you sing so well. Who is your guru? Tan Sen said, Huzur, he is a sannyasi who resides in Vrindavan. His name is Swami Haridas. Even today, if you go to Vrindavan in Nidhivan, you will find the samadhi of Swami Haridas. So Akbar said, call him over. Tan Sen said, Huzur, he is a sadhu. For him, a king and a beggar are alike. If you wish to meet him, you will have to come to Vrindavan for darshan. Akbar, by now, he was all agog with curiosity. He changed his attire and incognito, he accompanied Tansen. They reached Vrindavan to the hut of Swami Haridas, had his darshan, offered their obeisance. And Swami Haridas, now how to ask Guruji that please sing something and show us. So Tan Sen began singing on his Tanpura. And finally, he was deliberately making mistakes. So Guruji took the Tanpura from his hand and he said, my child, not like this. Let me show you how to sing. 
Now, when Guruji started singing, Akbar's ears opened up. He had never heard anything like that. When they were returning, Akbar was silent for a while. And then he said, Tan said, the way your guru sings, why can you not sing like that? Earlier he had asked that you sing so well, who can your guru be? And now the question had turned 180 degrees that the way your guru sings, why can you not sing like that? And Tamsen gave a very insightful answer. He said, Huzur, the answer should have been obvious to you. I am singing for the Badshah of Hindustan that is you. My motivation is to please this mundane king, yourself. And my guru is singing for the pleasure of the king of the world. For the Badshah of the whole Jagat. So naturally the inspiration that he feels, there is no way I can match it. Similarly, when we purify our intention, my works are all an offering to the divine. We become effective. Our mind becomes detached from results and focused on the efforts. We become freed from stress, anxiety, and so on. Besides that, we have discussed the mind and the intellect. I will take one more theme in today's discussion and then we will move on to the questions and answers. A third aspect of the mind is the chit. The chit is the subconscious. Now we have this part of the mind, the subconscious, that is there, but we are not aware of. And from time to time, it is throwing emotions at us. If somebody becomes claustrophobic. The moment they are in a tight space, they become nervous and they can't understand why they are nervous. Somebody else is terribly scared of water, hydrophobia. Somebody is scared of high spaces. Do you know why these kinds of fears, they arise inside? They are coming from the subconscious. As a little child, that boy got stuck in the elevator. And he remained there for three hours which was extremely frightful to his conscious mind. Now, after three hours, he was taken out. And when, as the weeks went by, the conscious mind forgot about it. But the experience remained embedded in the subconscious mind. That subconscious is like a huge hard drive within us which has got experiences coming on from childhood. So every time the situation arises, the subconscious throws the fear into the conscious mind. Now we are aware of our conscious mind. We are not aware of the subconscious, but it has such a strong impact. Some people are naturally positive. Some people are naturally pessimistic naturally negative thinkers, they have conditioned their subconscious to be such. So if we wish to get the best out of our mind, we need to program it to become our friend. And how will we program it? By properly engaging the conscious mind in training the subconscious. The subconscious is an obedient slave. Whatever the conscious mind says, the subconscious accepts. So if the conscious mind says that I'm allergic to mushrooms and keeps on saying, I'm allergic to mushrooms, I'm allergic to mushrooms, the subconscious has believed it. And next time you find a mushroom in the food, the subconscious throws out, you know, 
boss said that we are allergic to mushrooms and the vomit happens. So the subconscious is such a wonderful slave of ours. I am sure you must have tried this. If not, go ahead and try it. At night, before sleeping, make a resolve. I wish to wake up at 5.30. Let it sink into your subconscious and go to sleep and see what will happen in the morning. At 5.28, your subconscious will wake you up. So powerful it is. What are we doing to it? When we keep on saying, I am no good, I can never do it, the consequence is that the subconscious gets programmed with negativity and pessimism because of our defective self-talk. And if we just change this self-talk to good affirmations, I am blessed. I have received so many graces, the hands with 10 fingers, my bodily parts, the air that I breathe. Human life is an opportunity. When we speak to ourselves like this, the subconscious will become rosy and cheerful. Now, the Vedic scriptures, they gave us a technique. They said, just do a japa of the name of God. Rather than saying, kuch nahi hoga, sab to bekar hai, etc., that the mind likes to keep chattering. You chatter the name of God with every breath, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sham, and your subconscious will become divine and you will be a karma yogi. But even more powerful than self-talk is another technique with which I am going to complete today's presentation. And this is visualization. So what is visualization? They say in English, a picture is worth a thousand words. Pictures are extremely impactful to us because that is how we learned anything. When we learned car, we were shown the picture of a car and that's how we identified. That is why when you walk out into a parking lot to see where your car is, you don't read the numbers. You have the picture of your car in your mind. You say, not this, not this, not this. Oh, there it is. It matches with the picture I had in my mind. So these pictures within our mind have a huge impact. And the power of visualization can be utilized to train this mind into peak performance. Sports personalities know its value because they are in an arena of human performance where the fraction of a second can make a difference between gold medal and bronze medal. So how to ensure that they are getting the best out of their muscular skeletal system? They utilize the power of the subconscious. One, the best golfer in history, Jack Nicholas, he gives his testimonial. Of course, he's no longer number one, but he was for a long period. He says, I never hit the ball before first visualizing myself hitting it, watching it in trajectory and seeing it fall down. I hold that image in my head and then I do the needful. What happens? Now the subconscious comes into play because in any work, there are millions of processes, mental and physical to control. It is too much for the conscious mind to handle. But when the subconscious gets to work, then you go to hit the best shot. So this is using the power of visualization to train the mind. And the same power of visualization can be used to purify the mind. And that is why in religious traditions around the world, symbols have always been used which signify purity and divinity based on that culture in people's minds. And by utilizing these, we can create divine sentiments. Now, New Year is around the corner. 
and people are in the habit of making new year resolutions they write them in their diary in golden letters i will visit the gym every day i will reduce my uh, carbohydrates etc etc but within one week it's all forgotten about one man went to the gym on 3rd of january and he found the parking lot was full there were lines in front of all the machines so he asked the manager what is the matter do i need to search for another gym i can't wait 15 minutes every day in these lines the manager said sir please be patient within 3 weeks it will all be cleared up these are the new year resolution people they have made the resolution they will be fired up for a few weeks then it will be gone so how do you sustain that resolution don't just write it in words visualize yourself in the gym let the image sink down within you it will become a part of your perspective and you will find much it much easier to execute it so in this book i have been teaching the science of mind management which i have been teaching for about 3 and a half decades and uh, i deliver a series of discourses on it so put it down there and i have in today's talk i have given you a little gist of the vast potential of this subject actually i popularized this term mind management about 15 years ago and now i see that it has been adopted in buddhism and it's become a part of mindfulness but nevertheless the vedic knowledge in this field is so deep that you must utilize that treasure to enrich your life to find fulfillment to find success and to find happiness so with those words i'd like to once again thank the amdavad management association and i would like to welcome the questions from the organizers on behalf of the audience. Uh, Karya sir, yeah, thank you. Radhika, you will read the question from chat box to. No, you. I, I will read it out, sir. I'll read it out, sir. Yeah. So first question goes like that: is that in the thirty-fifth verse of the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, what is abhyas as said by Lord Krishna when he says abhyas to kante? And I want uh, and the for the. participant also would like to know how can one do the abhyas all right very nice question in the previous verse of the bhagavad gita 34th verse 6th chapter arjun has asked he has presented his problem so he says chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavatridam तस्याहम निग्रह मन्य वायोरी वसुदुष्करम ओ श्री कृष्ण दिस माइंड इज सो डिफिकल्ट टू कंट्रोल इट सीम्स टू मी इट इज मोर डिफिकल्ट देन कंट्रोलिंग द विंड देन इन द नेक्स्ट वर्स लॉर्ड कृष्ण सेज असंशयम महाबाहो मनोर दुर निग्रहम चलम अर्जुन व्हाट यू आर सेइंग इज करेक्ट द माइंड इज डिफिकल्ट बट इट इज नॉट इंपॉसिबल नॉट अनिग्रह only durnikra but everything in life is difficult to work to study for 16 years to become a post graduate is difficult to make a house for yourself to raise a family all these things are difficult so don't be discouraged abhyasena tu kaunte ya vairagyena ch grihyate abhyas practice and vairagya detachment so your question it what abhyas see the mind is thinking oh i can never do it i will never succeed it is thinking a negative thought now 
don't let the mind control you you control the mind so tell the mind no i will not think like this i will think like this by the grace of god everything is possible so you reject an inferior thought and replace it with a superior thought you discard a harmful emotion and replace it with a good emotion when you keep on doing this practice slowly slowly that mind which is like a spoiled child will get disciplined it will come under control that if mind has got the quality of neuroplasticity it keeps getting molded as you try to control it thank you thank you swami ji the next question is that uh, why does mind destruct one like i think divert i think to the easier path rather than the intellectual leading to a tough but better path but why so easily will we fall prey to the mind that's right that is the dilemma of human life where we always have choices god has made this puzzle for us to solve that is why the katopanishad states there is shreya and prayer two kinds of happiness the prayer is that happiness which is very pleasant right now but later on it becomes bitter like poison and shreya is that happiness which is like poison right now but later on it becomes sweet so the mind is like a little child it wants prayer and the intellect wants shreya it wants long term benefit so the problem is that the immediate pleasure is right there before us and the long term benefit you say you know you exercise in 3 years you will become healthy so the intellect is not convinced the mind convinces the intellect it's all right no mind this is better but if you could strengthen your intellect that is buddhi yog you would control the mind just like when a student goes for the exam now all the year long the mind says you know not studies video games not studies social media and when he goes for the exam now he controls the mind keep it here because the intellect is convinced this is very important so the moment we can convince ourselves we will be able to pull the mind and keep on enhancing that one thing called self discipline which i had talked about thank you thank you swami ji there are many questions coming in but due to paucity of time i will not take all of them i'll just take next one or two questions swami ji with your permission sure sure yeah the next question is from the youtube viewer he is asking that why like why that he is not satisfied with his life so what is the why the mind is giving the signals to him about the dissatisfaction yes so we people start identifying with the thoughts and that is how the mind grips us so you use the vedic knowledge to understand you are not the mind you are the soul just like you are not the body you are separate from the body similarly you are not the mind as well you are the soul the mind will play mischief it will create such thoughts i am not satisfied so your job in mind management is to say no i will not listen to these thoughts i will not identify with these emotions initially it will seem so difficult because you cannot see the difference between the self and the emotions but slowly as you exert that muscle one day two days three days within one or two months it will become easy 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 so the moment you can master this thing you will become the master of your emotions so just tell yourself i will not listen to these emotions that is a choice you have to make 
If you stop making the choice, the mind will make you go round and round and round. That is what happens to compulsive thinkers, reactive thinkers, negative thinkers. So exert your free will. My dear mind, I will not give you the freedom to think negative. Thank you. Thank you, Swamiji. The last question I would like to post, that is that uh, you have touched, like you have already touched up concepts of uh, mind and man and buddhi. But can you please enlighten on the dynamics of chit and ahankar, their role in mind management and also guide us in the do's and don't of our mind management in day-to-day -day daily life. Thank you. The mind and intellect we discussed, the chit is the subconscious. That also we discussed. That you, with the help of proper self-talk, you program your chit or subconscious to make it your friend. Okay, now the ego. The ego is the sense of self. The ego gives the self identity. And the ego is what causes all kinds of problems. The feeling of hurt, the feeling of pride, etc. The feeling of dissatisfaction because the ego says that the whole universe is for my sake. And the purpose of the universe is to fulfill my desires. So the cause of all the tensions is the ego itself. Now, if we can correct that ego, that I am not the center of the universe, I am a little tiny fragment. If my wishes are not fulfilled, doesn't matter, it's not so important. I should fulfill the wishes of God for what reason he has sent me in this world. I should fulfill his wishes. So that becomes the purified ego. Purified ego is that I am the servant of the divine. And when we have that ego within us, then we don't feel hurt. And we automatically start doing our works in a spirit of dedication to the Lord. So this ego is an acronym for edging God out. Now, the moment there is ego, we have forgotten the Lord. And the moment you think the Lord is so big, then I am so tiny in front, then the ego disappears. So this is a little bit about the ego. Thank you. Thank you, Swamiji. I think uh, with, there are many questions popping, but I, we cannot, because of the limitation of the time, I have cut them off. Uh, but I have requested, uh, I'll request that I, they can post the questions through email, which I can forward to your organizers uh, at US. So maybe they would be in touch later. With that, sir, I will hand over the session to Karya, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Radhika and uh, Swamiji. Big thank you uh, sharing the science of mind management. I think on behalf of AMA and all the participants, I would like to put it in record. The talk was very engaging to all of us with uh, examples, stories. Uh, take home is plenty and many connecting dots. We got the answer. Even today's talk, including our Q&A session, I think gave all of us or, you know, the starting roadmap to answer the big question that are we in control of mind or mind is controlling us? <laughs> that is a roadmap answer we got it. I think very important practice mastering mind will with a willpower, very engaging in the context of, uh, you know, managing self in the context of environment we are today. So even I, I would like to give my connecting dots like we do in our corporate uh, to train our people uh, on subconscious side, uh, teach them self-talk, which you said on the talk, right? We teach them always to ask yourself and give a reminder that I am alive and I am in now, just to be in the present. Even we teach them the you know action and cut for attach and detach, 
right so these are all connecting dots i was also you know thinking that what we are practicing but we have a lot of things to go ahead and i'm sure uh, you know this talk will help us so once again swami ji uh, thank you not on behalf of participant and ama even my thank you not to all the participants who are on the call and live on youtube with us so thank you for being here today morning again last reminder if anybody is interested they can buy the book i think radhika has put the uh, amazon link and uh, this is with uh, i request to conclude today's morning program thank you thank you everybody uh, uh thank you uh, mr karya it was a pleasure i like to thank the amdavad management association for having arranged this program and very happy to connect with all of you today on this topic namaste and thank you all namaste swami ji namaste everybody and thank you karya sir wishing you all yeah have a nice day ahead for the participants joining from india and swami ji good night yeah <laughs> yes good day to you good day thank you i'll with your permission i'll end the meeting here sir thank you